We begin our Good Friday service for those with us in the building or on Zoom or coming to join us later on YouTube. Welcome to worship. Let us begin with our prelude. We begin by lighting the Christ candle. We do so, remembering that this light will be removed, remembering that darkness will come. We do so knowing the rest of the story, but remember on that first Good Friday, no one knew what was to come. Let us respond with Jesus, remember me. Let us join in our call to worship. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. When they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him. He was wounded and suffered. He was bruised for our iniquities. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Upon him was the infliction that made us whole, 
and with his stripes we are healed. Then Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Let us pray together. A body bruised and battered, pierced by nails and sword, these are the images of this day. O oh God, how do we approach the man who didn't just talk the talk, but walked the walk, a walk which took him to the cross? We come looking to that very cross for healing and hope. Yet on this day, it seems hopeless. Be with us as we struggle and pray. Amen. And our hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. I know that many people say, I don't want to go to Good Friday service. It's too depressing. Well, that is kind of what it's all about. It's like the fact that we need to go and grieve at a funeral service. Today is the funeral service for the one we call Jesus. And so while we hear and experience difficult emotions, the grief and anguish of this day will allow for the awe and wonder of the day to come. So we begin to hear the story in the book of Isaiah. And this is the last of the four poems found in Isaiah 40 to 45, which are known as the servant songs, because each speaks of a servant. They were seen as foretelling the coming of the Messiah in the centuries before Jesus was born. Jesus saw himself as fulfilling these prophecies. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. 
Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them they shall see, and that which they had not heard they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. We hear echoes of this day in something written centuries before. How does it make you feel? What images command your attention? What tugs at your heart? Our responsive psalm is verses from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the cry of my distress? O my God, I cry out in the daytime, but you do not answer. At night also, 
but I get no relief. But you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. They called to you, and you rescued them. In you, they put their trust, and you did not disappoint them. But I am a worm less than human, an object of derision, an outcast of the people. All those who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and toss their heads, saying, You trusted in God for deliverance. If God cares for you, let God rescue you. But you are the one who took me out of the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you have I depended from my birth, even from my mother's womb. You have been my God. My God, my God, I have forsaken me. Do not be far from me, for trouble is close at hand, and there is no one to help me. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravenous, roaring lion. My life pours out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart has melted like wax within my breast. My mouth is parched as dry clay. My tongue clings to my palate. I lie in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. The wicked hem me in on every side. They bind my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones while they stand staring, gloating over me. They divide my garments among themselves. They cast lots for my clothing. Do not stand far from me, O God. You are my helper. Come quickly to my rescue. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the mauling of dogs. Save me from the lion's mouth, my afflicted soul from the horns of the wild cattle. Then I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. Jesus, alone, feeling as though God has disappeared. As we bring our hearts, minds, and voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught us, may we remember that night in the garden when Jesus said, please know what your will, not mine. Let us pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn, They Crucified My Lord. Jesus and his disciples have now met and had their last supper together. He's given his farewell address to those that were present, and it seems to other followers, not just the disciples. He's preparing them for their role in his new mission for them. He's resisted the temptation to avoid death on the cross. Judas has betrayed him to the authorities. He's been bought before the high priest. The next morning before the Sanhedrin, and this council considers that it has sufficient evidence to bring him before the Roman authorities. And so we hear and respond as the incredible story continues to unfold. This is how Luke tells that story. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, you say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent. 
And they said, he stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea from Galilee, where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was actually under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad for he'd been wanting to see him for a long time because he'd heard about him and he was hoping for Jesus to perform some sign or miracle for him. He questioned Jesus at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes, they stood by vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then Herod put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate, they became friends. Before this time, they had been enemies. Then Pilate called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence and have found this man not guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither is Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted together, Away with this fellow, release Barabbas for us. Now, Barabbas was a man who'd been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time, Pilate said to him, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who'd been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed over Jesus as they wished. Do you feel the loneliness of Jesus? Found not guilty by two Roman officials and yet still condemned to death. He may have spoken a mumble and word, but not very many. As they led Jesus away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from that country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. 
But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with those criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And they cast lots for his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Then let him save himself and come down from the cross, if he is the Messiah of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription placed over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we, indeed, have been condemned justly. For we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness covered the whole of the land until three in the afternoon, when the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, they stood at a distance watching all these things. What does it feel like to stand and watch all these things?
Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who though a member of the council, had not agreed to this plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared the spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. Are you willing to risk what Joseph did to be discovered as a follower of Jesus? Can you find peace in the Sabbath, knowing Jesus is in the tomb? to share in our prayer of separation and confession. The friends of Jesus could not share his distress and isolation of spirit in Gethsemane. We hear a call to be compassionate to those who are going through times of testing. Peter, in the high priest's courtyard, denied any knowledge of Jesus. We hear a call to speak the truth, especially when it is easier to evade the truth. The disciples hid away at the time of trial and execution. We hear a call to resist the powerful and to stand with the powerless. The cry of Jesus, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We hear a call to remember that at the moment we feel God's absence most acutely, God is present. Amen. Our hymn, Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross. Thank you. 
Our sending forth is responsive. The cross confronts us. It shows that unrestrained power can lead to death. The cross invites us to walk the path of Christ, which calls for sacrifice. The cross challenges us, not just to observe suffering, but to relieve it. The cross leaves us in awe. The love of God goes beyond all limits. You are asked to leave the church this day in silence following this. A blessing will be pronounced on Easter morning. Go in silence remembering what Jesus gave for us, what his followers were feeling that first Friday. For now, it is finished.